Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. I'm now going to be answering question number six from the IGCSE paper four extended um, of February, March 2020. Um, this is paper four two. There's only one variant actually in February and March. Uh, it says Suleika has six cards numbered one to six. She takes one card at random, records the number and replaces the card. Write down the probability that the number is a 5 or a 6. So this is about just taking one card out of uh, these six cards. And, you know, she wants to know the probability that the card is a 5 or a 6. Well, there's two cards that fit that description out of the 6. So the probability of getting a 5 or a 6 is 2 out of 6, which is, in its simplest form, 1 third. Okay. Then it says, Suleika does this 300 times. Find how many times she expects the number 5 or 6. Well, one-third of the time, she's going to expect a 5 or a 6. So one-third of 300 is 100. So it's 100 times. Okay, pretty simple so far. Then it says, Suleika takes two cards at random without replacement. Find the probability that the sum of the numbers on the two cards is 5. Okay, so two cards without replacement that's a key word here that means she's going to take a card and she won't put it back in again so that number won't be in there for the second pick so it affects this in um, a number of ways one of the ways it affects it is the second pick okay there's less cards to choose from so the you know the number of out outcomes is going to change all right it's going to get less so let's look at the possible ways of getting a five all right you can pick a first card of one and a second card of four that's a way of getting a 5. 1 plus 4 is 5. Or you could get the first card 4 and the second card 1. That's kind of the separate probability. Okay, that's another possibility. Or you could get the first card as a 2 and the second card as a 3. Or the other way around. That's also another probability. A 3 and then a 2. Okay, now there's no other ways of getting a sum of 5. Just one and four and two and three. No other way. Okay, so now, remember the first pick. This is the first pick and this is the second pick. All right, here there's going to be a difference. The first pick, there's only one one out of six. Now the second pick, there's only one four out of, now the one is taken. It's already been taken out. It's not being replaced. So there's only one four, but out of five cards now. Okay, and you'll notice that the same probability will be the same for each of these four cases because if you take a four there's one out of six take it away there's you want to pick a one next so there's one out of five so it'll be one over six times one over five same with the two and the three you pick a two that the probability is one over six getting a three next is only one three out of five it's going to be one out of five and the same for the last one. So basically you're going to have to add together this and this and this and this so you'll get the same thing four times okay so you're going to let four times one over six times one over five now don't make this mistake of multiplying the numerator and the denominator by four this is four over one times one over six times one over five the four and the six cancel leaving you with two and three so you've got on the numerator two on the denominator 15 so the answer is two out of 15. so that's the answer to part b okay so don't just count these probabilities once don't say one and four and two uh, you know two and three there's also four and one there's also three and two and don't forget for the second pick there's one less card so you're going to have to take out of five cards not six cards so the probability will be out of five not out of six okay that's part b okay now part b that's b part one b part two it says find the probability that at least one of the numbers on the cards is a square number Okay, at least one. Now, there's two ways to deal with this question, actually. Two ways. Okay, so the first way is to just take it the way it looks. At least one of the cards is a square number. So you can say, okay, um, she's, remember, she's taking them and she's not replacing. This is still part of the same question that without replacement. So without replacement. Okay, so basically, the square numbers are one and four. Those are the square numbers in this, in this list. So you want to find that at least one of the two cards uh, of, of the two cards is a square number. So basically, you could pick a one 
or a four and a four. That's one probability. Or a four and a one. Okay, that's where they're, this is where they're both square numbers. Both square numbers, right? That's one, that's one combination. The other combination is the first is a square number and the second isn't. Okay, so that means the first could be either two or four. Okay, so think about, think about this in another way. This, this is probably better. The first card is a square number and this, the second one is also a square number. That would be, if they're both, so you, the first probability that they're both square numbers because at least one means either one or the other or both. So let's take, let's take, take them as both square numbers. So for the first pick, to get a square number, there's two square numbers out of six. So that's the first pick is a square number and the second is also a square number. So now, if you've already picked one of the square numbers, there's only one square number left. So if you pick the one, there's a four left. If you pick the four, there's a one left. Okay, so the second pick, you're going to have only one square number out of five left. So that will give you the probability that they're both square numbers. Okay, they're both square numbers. The second one is, we can say that the first is a square number. Okay, and the second, the first is a square number, and the second isn't a square number okay so if the f for the first to be a square number it's going to be again two square numbers out of six but for the second to be not a square number well there's still four uh, numbers that are not square if you've picked a square number say you pick the one first all right out of these five cards there's five cards left because you're not replacing them four of them are not square numbers only one of them is square so you're going to have two over six times four over five and the other probability, which is the first is not a square number and the second is a square number, will give you the same thing because it's going to be four out of six, which is not square. And now the second pick, this if you've picked a number that is not square, so for example, say you pick the two, it's not square. All right, out of the five cards left, two of them are still square. So it'll be two out of five. So these two actually give us the same thing. Because you got two times four, four times two, and you got thirteen in the denominator. It's like two times one of them. All right. So those can combine together and just have two times one of them. And the third possibility is that basically at least one of the two numbers is square. That's it. Those are the possibilities. Either both of them are square, or the first is square and the second one isn't. Or the first isn't square and the second one is. That's at least one. The only probability that we don't want is that they're both not square numbers, which is what I'm going to show you in the second method. So this is going to give you 2 over 6 times 1 over 5, which is going to be 1 third times 1 fifth, which is 1 over 50. And this is basically 2 times 1 of these. Okay, so this is like, if you combine these together, you've got 2 times 2 over 6 times 4 over 5. So the 2 cancels with this. You're going to have a 3. And you're going to have, um, yeah, that's going to be 8 over 15. So 1 here, so it's going to be 8 over 15. So 8 over 15 plus 1 over 15 is 9 over 15. So 9 over 15 in its simplest form, divide by 3, divide by 3, is going to be 3 fifths. So the probability is 3 out of 5 that at least one of the numbers is going to be a square number, okay? So that's one way of doing it, but by far the easier way of doing it is as follows. You say, okay, the only thing that doesn't fit our description is that they're both non-square. They're both not square numbers, because if at least one of them is square, all right, then both not square numbers doesn't fit our description. So if we do one prop minus the probability that they're both not square, let's say square and square, not square, not square, all right? They're both not square. It's going to include all these other probabilities because either they're both square or the first is square and the second is square or the first is not square and the second is square, okay? Or they're both not square. So the probabilities, I mean, basically, if you think about a tree, you will have either square or not square. And the second pick, either square 
or not square. So I can pick either square or not square. The only, what we want is either they're both square. The first is square and the second isn't square. The first isn't square and the second is square. And they're both not square. If for, for them to be at least one of them square, we need these three probabilities. And we want to exclude this one. So one minus this one will give you those. So if you do one minus the probability that they're not square, okay, so that means out of the six cards, okay, there's two of them that are square. So four of them are not square. So it's one minus four over six. Okay, that's the first pick. Now the second pick, there's five cards left. And if you have picked a number that's not square, all right, for the first pick, then the second pick, there's going to be three of them which are not square. So that's going to give you one minus. <clears throat> That cancels with that, gives you one and two. That cancels with that, gives you um, two. So you've got two over five, one minus two fifths, which is equal to the same answer, three fifths. So we get to the same answer in two different ways. This is by far the easiest way of thinking about it. Okay, so that's something that you have to see when you've got to combine together all the probabilities except for one. In a situation, one minus the probability of that one that doesn't fit will give you the probability of all the others combined. So these are two different ways of doing the same question. Okay, I prefer this method, but this one also makes sense. So there we have the answer to question number six. That's it. Six is that's six done. It's a question about probability, and it's not too bad. It's pretty good. You have to just have a bit of a bit of um, you know logic when you do these probability questions. So there we have it. Um, and I will see, basically, um, I'm going to collect the questions from this paper in the playlist, which you can click over here to find. I will collect the questions about IGCSE probability in the playlist that you'll find over here. I will put a card up here, which will direct you to the paper two of this paper from the same session. And I will also put something here where you can if you wish, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in another video.